there's a lot of people who are kind of owning power that other people don't think that they should have. Mm -hmm. um, it felt to me, um, can you talk a little bit about that thing? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the past one I you said sure first one well, speaks alright alright so we'll do that after. well the thing about this show is season one is about how does one become a hero I know that because of the comic book everyone's thinking hero for hire but what we wanted to do with season one is you have somebody that's reluctant to be a hero what pulls somebody out of the shadows and once they're out of the shadows, what are they going to sacrifice? And even in sacrificing that thing, what's going to keep them pushing forward? And so Luke Cage is the character that's dealt with a lot of tragedy. But there has to be an optimism. There has to be something that propels them forward. And so that's really the thing that we deal with. It's like, I hate to say the Marvel cliche, but it's true. With great powers and great responsibility. One thing that Jeff Loeb always said is that Marvel heroes are um, reluctant from the standpoint of they're not happy to have their powers. I mean, Matt Murdock would much rather see and have his dad's life. You know, Jessica, as we know from her series, is very ambivalent about being a superhero. And Luke is no different. And so this is really about how somebody without a mask and without a costume is pushing forward in the community that really needs it. Yeah. Try to get a subway and be left alone. Get, get uptown, you know. Just do the normal things that people do. You know, stop in restaurants, have a meal. You know, he doesn't want all the attention that comes with being a superhero, which is a part of the series. It's really part of the experience that we have. And that's part of the story. It's like, you know, once he does step out of the shadows and, and, he, and he takes a hold of the superhero, you know, position, then what does that mean for his, his life, you know? You know? So it's, it comes with positives, but there are some negatives, too. What are the negatives? Negatives? Yeah. Oh, okay. now you have to be specific. Over here. <laughs> yeah, I hope you let that slide. I'm like, ah, okay. Well, negatively, I mean, when people like, like when people expect things from you, then now you, you're like, oh, you're like a, in a sense, you're a role model. I mean, who, who wants to be looked up at, looked up to? You know, because the responsibility is that you have to be better than you know than maybe you are have capabilities of being. Like you, you know, we all have flaws, and Luke is no different. You know, there's a you know the part of there's a part of. Um, not give too much away, but in, in one of the episodes, Luke talks about well, being guilty, being not guilty. What does that mean? We've done things. We've all done things that you know we are responsible for, and we never necessarily had our comeuppance. And and so, if you get away with it, does that mean you're good because you got away with it? Or if you get caught doing something that you really didn't do, and you're being punished for it, but you did, you got away with something else. You know, is this your karma coming back after you? So I think you know, with him, he's afraid of being held to a higher standard. That's something I don't think anybody really wants. I mean. I mean, no. I mean, we all want to be looked at in some regard as being good people. But when someone shines a spotlight on you and, and, and a microscope, is, you know, you put in a microscope, nobody really wants to be examined. And I think Luke is no different. He does not want that attention. And then also, I mean, the thing that we can't forget is something that we also deal with is the fact that Luke is a fugitive. You know, there comes a sacrifice with his power to his freedom because the more people that know about him, the more they could possibly find out the secret he harvests is called Lucas. Sure. You know, and. As we explore in the first seven, we're not really talking about it, but you guys have been lucky enough to see, it adds a certain dynamic to everything that he does because, I mean, he really doesn't want this attention, and he's got a good reason to not want the attention. Thank you. Um, but that's the thing that, he, you know, he does not anyway. And it's really what happens, you know, after episode two that compels him, despite it all, that he cannot just lay back. And right. cut as he, as he puts it. I mean, he really has to accept, you know, the responsibility of, of heroism, you know, and heroism stuff. Yeah. Could you talk to us about um, shooting in Harlem and using Harlem as a character in the show? Well, Harlem is like, <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, it's, it's a place that is filled with history. I mean, you know, Adam Clayton Powell is not just this old statue, he actually, you know, walked the streets of Harlem as did Malcolm X, you know, Lennox Avenue, Malcolm X Boulevard, Martin Luther King. I mean, you're, you're, you're both left with political history, you're left with musical history, you're left with just um, crime from the standpoint of Frank Lucas, Nicky Barnes, um, Bumpy Johnson, I mean, probably three of the biggest crime figures in, in American history, in terms of black history, all come from Harlem. So, Gangster Jim. Yeah. We really wanted to balance all these things, because the one thing about the Marvel Universe is different, is that it takes place in real New York. And so, we wanted really that whole, you know, 
the Cotton Club of it all, you know, like a, which is probably like a big influence on on me in terms of I've always loved. That's one of my, I mean, The Godfather is my favorite Coppola movie, but the Cotton Club is, is another great movie. I don't know if you've, if you've yeah. seen it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but it was Harlem's Paradise is kind of a mix of the Cotton Club and Lennox Lounge and, and Shaft, and you know, from the standpoint of you have underworld figures, with politics, all in one mix, and yeah, you had you know everything from Wu Tang to Adrian and um, Young and Ali's and Muhammad's score it's just like it's, it's on yeah. I have a question for Mike um, Luke Cage is such a prolific character and I understand that you read the comics I'm curious to know which runs did you read whether it was the 70s runs or the 90s runs or what the current run is and is this version of Cage mostly drawn from the comics or were there more creative liberties taken uh, well I have to correct you I, I did not read the comics growing up this is I, I, after I got a draw I started looking at the more recent um, incarnations of the comic the one obviously with Alias because that's the first thing we tackled with, with Jessica that character how he and Jessica's story was, was developed um, because that wasn't in the black exploitation 70s that wasn't there so this right, is all right. like kind of new and um, how and Power Man looked at some of those comics so for me what was re relevant was the fact that we didn't have to adhere to all of the of the history of Luke Cage because it's only applicable to a certain point we're talking about 2016 so what Chael was able to do because we had so sort of um, been given or he had been given the reign to create a world using the characters that already pre-existed and then you know fleshing them out you know expanding on them making it work the way he thought it should work to create a story that we were trying to tell that was of 2016 so this is a Luke Cage that has been reinvented in a sense and that was what excited me because I didn't want to be you know pigeon held to the what we was established throughout um, the 70s and later on because it just wasn't necessarily something that, that spoke to me and, nor I think was spoke to speak to the, the society that we live in today So because because the, the problems we're dealing with right now are real problems and so I felt like it would be necessary to have a guy who was dealing with the world from a real standpoint of like I need to figure out how I'm going to get from one day to the next and, and, and what my struggle is and in having that struggle He's dealing with people in society and in the community that have similar struggles that he has. That's what makes him relatable. You know, yeah, he's you know, he's he's on a hard he's falling hard times for reasons not you know not of his own of his own um, making. Where yeah, he needs a job, he needs to figure out how to like make ends meet. And but he's a good guy, strong character, wants to do right, wants a chance to do well. But he has to kind of like get over his past, and people have to allow him to get over his past. He's avoiding some things, but ultimately he's a good he's a, he's a good apple. He's a good nut, and so we're trying to figure out how to make this guy grow into this, I always say it's a journey of a man and a superhero, and simultaneously as he grows, he, 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 find, he finds out who he is, and somehow, sometimes he needs other people to help him find out who he is. There's characters that we deal with that you're going to find that when he comes into contact, they know more about him as a person because they've observed him, and he's going to learn from that, and, and, him, and in learning from that, he's going to start teaching other people about themselves. It's kind of like holding a mirror to yourself, because he wants to create superheroes out of everybody. He's not, he's not trying to be the superhero for Harlem, he's trying to get Harlem as a society and as individuals to start standing up and doing things the right way and, and, and then that's how you that's how you change a community one person at a time the way I kind of look at it is like I kind of look at the story as kind of being like a James Brown record from a hip hop perspective rather than playing the entire record you might chop up a little bit of Papa Don't Take No Mess or you might take a little you know a funky drummer you might take little bits of it and then you take and chop the record and then all of a sudden, out of that, you've made something that sounds different than the original, but you still feel the elements of it. So, in terms of Luke Cage's past, whether it was, you know, the original run in the 70s, um, or, you know, the, the, the Power Man and Iron Fist comics that I grew up with, really, um, there are elements of that there. We, we, you know, the sweet Christmas, sweet sister of it all is definitely yeah. on the show. Yeah. Yeah. But, it, you know, but at the same time, you know, and you, you might, without spoiling everything, I mean, you know, there, there's some, some, some chain belts and some tiaras yeah. somewhere. Yeah. But at the same time, we really wanted something that Mike was saying that was forward-thinking, modern, and adaptable to what's happening today. Because when people talk about black exploitation, I mean, immediately you think like bell bottoms and, and big, big hair, hair. And right. Right. Exactly. but you have to look at what black exploitation really was. All it was was it was filmmakers saying, "I want a black hero to have this, to do the same stuff that Steve McQueen 
and Sean Connery yeah. and John Wayne get to do. They get to walk in the middle of the screen, kiss the girl, kick ass. Yeah. Ra rather than, than being somebody that is always carrying water or comic relief or dies in the first 15, you know, 15 minutes. Yeah. That's all black exploitation is. I mean, of course, it went in these different directions, but essentially it was empowerment. And so what we did with this show is like, you now have a black hero at the center of it. And the thing that I always try to say about it is that he's, it's a show that is unapologetically black, but at the same time shows that being that, there's nothing to apologize for. So it's, a, it's, it's not, it's a definitely in the deep end of hip hop, but it's not done in a way that alienates anybody. If anything, I kind of feel like the city of God. I, I kind of feel like it's other entertainment that even if you're not from the culture, there's so much verb and energy, you're gonna want to take the time to kind of learn things about it and kind of get into it. And so, but if you but if you're from the culture, it's like, oh shit, this is like, <laughs> right, yeah. you know, this, this, this has an attitude of it. It's kind of the you know Wu Tang vacation of the Marvel universe. Yeah, you know. So I, I don't know. There was I don't know. There was a prerequisite that they keep those slogans, those those those, those terms like you know, sweet Christmas and, and sweet sister and all those things. But we did it, and we owned it, and you know, we didn't explain it. It is, it just is. Like nowadays, you know, terms come and go. Like sometimes people say stuff, and you go, oh, that's a new term now. You go, what does that mean? And that it may stick or it may not stick. You know, back in the day, it was psych. You know, it may not just. I was just kidding. <laughs> psych come back, maybe. Right. Well, well, I mean, that's the thing. It's like you know, lit's the whole thing. I'm, I'm old, so everything's dope. Everything's dope. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, use that. that. That's my error. And, and, and that's dope to me. It's gotta come back. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna stick. Right. It's you gonna know? come back. I mean, uh, you know, um, one of my favorite black quotation films is Blackula. Look at Blackula. Yes. There's, no, there's yes. nothing different about Blackula except he's black. Exactly. It's, I mean, the story is the same. He came, he came from Africa, right. and you know, instead of Transylvania. And he had the, he got the girl, and he was you know couldn't come out in the in the daytime, and his skin burned. It was all the same, and I didn't think about it. It was just Blackula. It's, right. It, it is. It is what right. it is. Exactly. And it's funny because you go with me, you just play. It. That's all. We, that's all it is. It's just you know that's it. Go with it. Yeah. Um, on, sorry. Uh, so, question specifically for you, since the hip hop thing keeps coming up. Um, you're the star of the show, yeah. yet. All of the musical sequences in the first half of the season happen without you in them. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you just like hanging around on set for the scenes that you weren't in just so you can? We can't discuss plot points, plot I guess, point, but, but, so but some of those music, to see some of those. I did try. I did, I did try. <laughs> like, um, I, I, I hung around for several of them. Some of them I missed just because it, either I was not around or I, was, I had to, because you know, we have two units sometimes, so right. they would be filming those things while I'm doing something else. So I wasn't able to always be there, but I, when I could, I, I was, you know, because it was, it, was a, it was an event. You know, somebody's performing, I, if I can, I'm yeah. coming to see it, you know. <laughs> the, um, you know, not knowing any of that before seeing the first couple episodes, it's like, whoa, they're in this? Yeah, yeah. The yeah. next episode, it's like, Oh, wait a minute. Deep, like, deep nice. Like, yeah. really? Yeah. <laughs> well, 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 I mean, but that's the thing. It's like, you know, coming from from being a, a hip hop journalist and, and kind of being able to just call D nice and be like, yo, D, you know, or, you know, the other, a lot of friends like right. Faith Evans. Yes. You know, I wasn't going to mention that, but like, you know, yeah. it's like, right. these are not just. Figures, they're people that that, I, that I've known for years. Mm -hmm. Even with Ali, with Ali Shay Muhammad, I've been writing about a tribe called Quest and Spin that Marauders. I mean, since Low End Theory, so it's like yeah. Yeah. It's able, being able to just reach the role next and say like, hey, can we do this and then have it be cool? It's like it's part of the fun of the show. Yeah. Is that you know you never know what to expect. <laughs>